Good morning. Here we are again. We got hard hats on <laughs> because the boulders or the stones from the top here were rolling down and threatening us. Our pile has grown. Our dirt piles have grown. Andy looks shorter. And we found a, I don't know, a 60 to 80 pound boulder. He's got his right foot on it there. I'm not taking that out, neither is he. I will kill my back and he'll kill his knees, so it's not worth it. So what we're doing is we just tucked them in at the back here. And we're going to dig this up so that we can get up and down easier. There's a couple of good sized ones in there still. You can see some of these are 14 inches in length. That one looks like it was two pieces. And I pulled that one and that one rolled down on my work boot. But I got steel toes. So it didn't hurt. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's one hiding down here. He's a good size. Might be a few more on the surface area. The only reason we're going out right now is so we can dig a little further because we couldn't do it. Everything was just coming in too much. And if you remember right, we were down to my shoulder height, about four and a half, five feet, about five feet. And uh, now a lot of that's come back in here. So we're gonna get in there, clean it out. And then we're going down a couple more feet is the idea. And that probably will be it. Take some samples and get back up out and fill it in. Ugh, lots of heavy lugging. I just spent almost an hour in there. Whew. But we're finding amongst these stones lots of samples, like this guy here. Um, you can see he's got quite the intrusion. Two different kinds, totally melded. And and he cracked it open and there was a little bit of shiny stuff. Here's some more pieces of them, I think. Yeah. So you can see it's all throughout. These guys are... Uh, there's iron in this one. Right there. They're all mixed together down there. That's a lot of iron in that thing. And a few of these set off the metal detector in the past, and the pinpointer. I like these very beautifully colored stone. Um, we've got a lot of blue stone here, green stone they call it. Andy has split them and checked them, and there's nothing overly visible in most of them. Uh, that one's got something on it, but it looks like sap from the tree. Yep, it is. My finger's sticky. There's another one. Cracked open with all kinds of mishmash stuff in there. Sadly, nothing visible on that one, but... Uh, where? I think he cracked all the blue ones and must not have found anything because they're not there. Lots of iron, iron, iron. Oh, look at the pink in that beauty. It's almost the color of my skin. I'm not that pink, but. <laughs> there we go. Well, here's a good uh, butt rest. No, you want to take that out. You don't want that coming down on you. <laughs> it's almost perfect. Mm, yeah. There you go, he's found himself a, a natural seat. <laughs> but I am supposed to be chilling, because I'm going to have to take another turn in there in a bit. Mostly you'll see Andy, because he doesn't think to film me unless I say, Hey bud, you want to film me? <laughs> so it, did you film that wooden rock and the speckles? Yeah, I did. Yeah. That's so. nice. It looks like Andy's doing 90% of the work, and he probably does 60, 65. <laughs> he does more than I do. He's very good at it. 
Yeah, I'll put on the glasses and take another look at this rock here and see if I can see what he was seeing in it. Because I do know he showed me and it was there. Uh, right there. Okay, you see at the end of my thumb. Yeah, we've got something that's silvery metal. Um, could be a pyrite, more than likely. But it could be something nickel. Um, silver is a little bit different, I'm learning. What do you got? Yeah. That's quartz. Yep. Or maybe more. Yep, there's a lot in that one. There's lots, lots that have the pinkish hue. Um, it was way more blue. I don't know, man. Did you break all the blue ones? Yeah, they're, they're like a blue-green color when I took them out. Maybe because they're not wet wet now, it's not showing so much. There's a lot of... Well, it looks gray on the camera from what I'm seeing, but there's a lot of blue-green in, in uh, many of these. And I tossed a few over this way to be checked. Look at the pink in that one. Purpley. Pinky purpley. Maybe they got buried some of them. Because it was at the beginning. Whoa. Okay, that's one of them. You can see the darker color in it. It almost goes gray, I guess. Is rather interesting. There's definitely iron in it, but there's this pink stuff running through on an angle through the grain. That was only one shot, so as heavy as this stuff is, the density's a little low, I guess. No, that doesn't make sense because density equals heavy. Heavy. Um, yeah, you can see the pinkish stains running right through it. Nothing shiny in there, unfortunately. So it was, there, you can see that pretty good. As nice looking it is as it is, it's of, there's the other one. <coughs> it's really of no interest unless it has something that we can process. Right at the top there, that's a lot of color. Seeing a little shiny piece of silicate, that's all I'm seeing. But there's a, a band of something intruding through there. That's what I was talking about, the color. So, pretty neat rock. Whatever it is, it's causing it to be a blue-green color when you first pull it out of the earth and it's damp. That's going to hurt someone's ears on the other side of the internet. <laughs> if at first you don't succeed, bigger hammer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a piece chipped off it. It's like slate now. Oh my goodness, in the camera, can you ever see the color? It's like a blue. That's much prettier there. Yeah. So that's what it looks like to my eye when I first pull them out of the hole. It's like a blue slate. But what I'm seeing with my eyes outside the camera, it's gray. So the camera's picking up something in there that's it's able to. But that's enough of playing with stones for a bit. I'm supposed to be taking a break. Well, we'll get back to work in a little bit and then do some more filming. Maybe we show me down there for a change. <laughs> A hard working guy's always in the hole, it seems.
never dug anywhere. Where there's more gravels, boulders, than there are dirt. Full work. dark. in hopes of finding gold. The magnetic anomaly that's supposed to be down here, we went down to the river's edge and looking down it's about 50 feet of overburden. It heaps up and comes down a few feet here. So we're looking at 40 to 50 feet just to hit river level. I don't think we're going to find that anomaly unless it comes up quite high. Um, so, gold, other precious metals is the aim, I guess. And today will be most likely our last chance to do it. So once we get back down to where we were, we're going to go down a couple feet, take some samples, Throw all the stuff back in. Seems like a huge waste of time, but if we had actually found it, it would have been well worth it. It would kind of suck to, to go home, run the stuff, find that we did hit a pay dirt, and we just buried it. <laughs> <laughs> but the bug season is about to start. You can't leave this hole open for an animal or a person to fall into, so. We don't have much choice. If we did hit a nice pay streak, which is not likely, um, eh, it might be worth coming out with a little bit of machinery, a little backhoe, or something like that, and dig it back out because this is a younger man's job. we're not down at the bottom yet because the overburden off the top is what's coloring this stuff here. When we knocked in the sides that went down first and then as we knocked in more boulders and lighter sand came in on top, most of that's out.
mosquito. One down. 554 trillion more to go. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be here to greet them. Okay. This is what we were trying to show earlier. Once you get to this level, you can see there is a gap in there. At a certain point, the frost layer stopped about here, roughly three, three and a half feet down. And the stuff below it, maybe because of the thawing every year, water coming down through it, I don't know. But it left air holes between all the boulders. Um, we want to get just under those boulders to take samples, so that's our, uh, our level right there. That's a fence post and a big old piece of metal from a spring off a vehicle. We shaped it, nailed it in, hammered it in there real good and tight. His name's Brutus. Brutus has a lot of brute force. We have a smaller one. I forget what I named him. Though. We don't use him as much, but he's really handy to get in around the rocks when they're tighter. All the way through. Boulder, boulder, boulder. guy was big enough. We decided to leave him here. We use him as a step. We do have all the stuff cut in that would have fallen on us.
He's big. Never too hard for brooders. That one I just got out is at the right level. This big one here is at the right level. So it's just getting this stuff out here. I think I'm gonna take a break. Andy can clean the, some of this out. And then we're ready to go down. It's that last stone. Put the kibosh on me for a few minutes. All righty. Mama, I feel old. <laughs> All right, young lad. Your turn. Whew. That is crazy stuff. Can you imagine the guys out here literally all summer long getting eaten alive by every bug on the planet? Those were tough fellas, man. They got up with the sun, they ate their breakfast, and they got in a hole, and they dug, and they panned, and tested, and... There was a crew here in the, I'm trying to remember, it was the 60s? Um, did hundreds of holes like this to take samples. Now, they were a large crew, but the purpose was just to check the area so that if they found anything of worth, um, they could then you know, sell that claim to mining operation. And they might even get, you know, part ownership in uh, whatever it produces or something. Stocks, bonds, I don't know, whatever it was. And they found in this area, just north of here and to the right a little bit, they found the place for gravels to contain, that's this stuff here, to contain enough gold uh, that it was just worthwhile for like a small company, not a large company. Large companies want veins and high amounts of gold in the rock itself. Uh, they usually prefer bedrock. It's more of a consistency. You can test it by drilling. There's lots of metal in these rocks, but it's not enough in these boulders. It's not enough, sadly, to turn into a living. Uh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't come away processing this stuff for 10, 12 hours a day, crushing it and uh, running it through a sluice. You wouldn't come away with enough metal to pay for the cost of labor the fuel, all that. So you have to find proof that there's something down there. That anomaly was the thing we were aiming for. I was honestly hoping it was it came up much higher. But unfortunately, that's not the case. We'll go down a foot or two more here and take some samples. And if we don't see bedrock, we don't see bedrock. The chances are slim. But... Hope runs high, you never know, eh? If you use that little skinny guy, man, he breaks through that stuff and just wiggles it around, makes it nice and loose. Oh, yeah. But I think I, I'm where Andy would love to throw his dirt, so... Flapping my gums and making his job harder. Some of the test results in the areas around here have shown um, they, they measure the amount of gold in parts per million. And it was like 0 0.02 parts per million when a mining company wants five parts per million. So that's a, a huge difference. You know, um, 
unless you hit a pay streak and can follow it. It's pretty slim, so that anomaly was the big hope that there was something there in the bedrock because it was picked up by the electromagnetics survey. Um, it showed extremely strong and they, no one's ever worked it, as I've said before. They don't know what it is. Um, I read re recently, just the other night, um, I was doing some more research, came across a group and they said it could be folded layers of volcanic and, and sedimentary rock or something. They really don't know. Now, uh, Whistle Mine had a lot of folded um, rocks. I mean, it looked like... Um, lasagna noodles that fold back on themselves and then go ahead. Yeah, it was like that all through uh, in the open pit. Um, there was a group from Japan came over, a group of geologists, and even though it was pouring, and I do mean pouring, like huge raindrops, for three, four hours they were down there easy. Just didn't want to go home. Didn't want to leave that place. They didn't care that it was pouring. They were down there taking pictures of the rocks and just blown away by the geology because it was so rich. The, the nickel was the big thing there, but all the platinum group metals were there, The all of it. Gold, silver, yep. So wherever you get uh, superheating of the Earth's crust, and glaciers moving and all that stuff going on, you can get some pretty messed up looking holes in the rocks. And sometimes you get intrusions from, you know, volcanics into that area and, and you get even more. I just got bit by a mosquito, just saw another one land on the camera. Yeah, they're out today. This is the start of the bad stuff when these guys come out in this bush, they get chewed. So we'll come back in a little while and show you when we get down just a few more inches because then we'll be into the dirt that we're going to sample. Okay. Oh, I told you about that rock. It's not stable. It might roll onto you. The bank underneath is not stable though. Look at that, eh? Brute is going to hold the bucket. <coughs> We're going to get some samples now down here. It's uh, The sand has gotten a little bit coarser, but there's a lot of clay right there at that level. Uh, take the poker there and loosen it up first, Andy. Otherwise, you're going to be digging for a long time with that little guy. It's right there to your side. bit of a method to use a little skinny guy. Um, we're not seeing any large or medium boulders anymore. It's all small stuff and it's quite clay-like so it's hard to know how many feet of that there could be. It could be a foot, could be 10 feet. You just don't know. But if we could, I would love to get down and find bedrock. But like I said before, chances are slim. And he's already got that poker down another five inches. And he's not really feeling bedrock. He's moving stuff. So he's going to poke around down there in a while. Take some samples and put them in the bucket. <coughs> and that will be the end of our day. Yeah, you want to toss the rocks out separately, though. I'll hand comb it out. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I pulled a few small stones and boulders out of there. Um, the clay was like half an inch thick on it. But I wasn't ready to scrape yet, and I wasn't positive that it didn't fall in from above on the side somewhere, so I wasn't about to sample it. That'd be a waste. So this is going to be slow going because we're just collecting this and uh, putting it in the bucket. Yeah, don't worry about little ones. The little ones can go in the bucket. So 
Says, yeah. It's a tight space, even with us widening it as much as we did. And we thought getting out would be easier if we made a bit of a ramp over here, a couple of steps, but by the time you dig down a little bit more, you lose that extra. So this is how the guys did it all those years. And now it is mosquito season. Yeah, they're really dark. Digging with machinery to, to fill this back in and take you four or five minutes, ten tops, depending on the machine. Digging by hand, we gotta knock all this in. Like I told them, we're gonna be using our feet to roll a lot of these boulders in. That'd be a full day just to get this buried in again. Oh no, a couple hours. Oh, it's taking almost two hours to sand. <laughs> and then yeah. it'll be. Uh, you can see the clay. All right. It's quite a different color there. It's a bit moisture. Now that could be um, rainfall we had. It's hard to tell. In another part of this claim, when I dug down, I got about this far and the water started coming in. It was uh, much, much sandier. No, no uh, pebbles or stones or anything. You glad we're down to the little ones. Eh? <laughs> when we got down about two feet, all the big ones were rolling back in off the edge. We had to throw them all out and move them out further. It's all a learning experience. <clears throat> and if you don't learn, you don't make it out of the bush. The mosquitoes are definitely out. Just had one try and bite me through my jeans. Got another one buzzing around my head. But if I'm up here feeding Andy, or feeding the mosquitoes, Andy's safe down there. He was cracking jokes earlier, taking advantage of his old man. Yeah. The old guy's gone squirrely. He's down there looking at something down there, and I'm telling him there's a chipmunk up here, and I thought it was a squirrel. <laughs> and he's like, that doesn't fit with what he's seeing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's looking at a squirrel. One point, squirrel at one point, he's over, he's over breaking rocks, and I'm down here with my head right down close to the my feet digging. And all I heard was, <laughs> it's, it's so muffled by the dirt. Come back up and it's like, what? <laughs> you gotta find the humor in things. Or you'll get grouchy over all the physical hurts. <laughs> Aches and pains and yeah, life goes on. See, I, I would be using that poker a lot more. Loosen it all up over and over. Oh, you got a hole underneath. Oh, another hole. We haven't, I haven't seen a hole since we got the bigger boulders out of there. So that might be interesting. We had them for a foot and a half. And then suddenly they vanished. talking about things you should put on t-shirts. What does a gold miner do? Or what does a gold miner count in his sleep? 
number of rocks he moves. week the bugs are going to be horrible out here and they will be biting. That's all it takes. Within a week to ten days of them starting to come out, man, they are so numerous it's insane. <coughs> Alrighty. Oh. Yeah, we got a little bit in the bucket. And we got a ways to go. So. I'll turn the camera off for now. I'll film some of the, uh, well, I'll film it a little bit to show you how, you know, more dirt and whatever's going on down here, and then us closing this all up. Do some filming of that in a bit, too. And all I can say is, if you're a praying person, pray we find something down here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Just for the fun of it, we, uh, Split the rocks, some of them, if they're interesting looking to see what's in them. And right there in front of my thumb, that shiny part, right there. And there's smaller ones, one, two, three, four. There's some iron up here on the end. And there's metal. Pretty heavy. Um, reminds me of a nickel ore, but it could be almost anything. And on the other side, there's the corresponding shinies. There's about six visible. Some are pretty small. That took about three wax, four wax on the end. Is, it's definitely got a metal. Oh, go bang! More iron along the edge. So it could be pyrite of some sort, but iron pyrite. But definitely some silicates in it. Got some shiny. Unfortunately, nothing hugely visible that you go, ooh, that's whatever you want, you know. So. Oh. And Andy is working hard at finding China. This big rock there that I said, don't sit on that. Yeah, it fell down into the hole behind him. Definitely heavy. It's the stone chucka. In this case, pebble. the stone that <laughs> boulder rolled in slowed him down a bit but now he's back to the main goal get the clay now, the last time we hit a layer of clay it was only a foot and a half or so down um, it was uh, it was a lot to wash off to say the least so he thinks this is of interest to split Definitely looks quartz, definitely got something, um, some kind of magnetite. So, yeah. We'll give her a crack, why not? And here's how you feed the bucket above your head. We have 
made ourselves an ocean of beach stones. Nothing else we could be wealthy in selling stone. <laughs> Alrighty, there's the little guy. Oh, he crumbled. He gave it up. Yeah, there's quartz in there. Good iron. Obviously, a uh, hoo. It's somewhat crumbly. So, looks right there to be something green in the darker color. So, could be a little copper in it. Lots of silicates. Nothing to write home about, though. Oh, Andy found this one. Well, I found it, and he split it, and that's gorgeous. That's just. Such a nice looking stone. Deep brown. Like a purpley brown. It's got some sandstone through it. You just don't know what you'll find until you start cracking them because yeah, there's a piece of something shiny there. there. There, there. Another tiny, tiny one there. Tiny one over here. Flip it. Mm. Oh, some right there. Almost missed it. Now that looks like calcopyrite to me. Oh, sorry. Magnifier. <coughs> Read it. Now, where'd you go, buddy? Those are obvious enough. There we go. Light. I'm in my own light. Okay. Whatever it is, it's highly oxidized. It's got a couple little specks of shine, and the rest looks like some kind of a mineral instead of actual. Oh, there, that angle. Look at it all shine. Copper. Yep, calcopyrite. Copper. <coughs> Into the pile of stuff we're going to probably keep. Alrighty. The bucket is... Well, we got down <coughs> to where we were standing at a six foot level, and you can see where the little stones are. That went down in the middle there. That went down to the seven foot level. And that was all we could do because the dirt just keeps falling in. So we got an eighth of a bucket there, quarter of a bucket here, and that's it. That's all that clay stuff. Um, the pebbles were definitely getting smaller down there, and I really wish we could keep digging, but between the stuff falling in and not having seen any visible signs of anything worth going after, we're going to call it put all that dirt and all these stones back in the hole. It's now three o'clock in the afternoon and we got a lot of work to do.
All the gravels from this side, except for that little pile are gone. Three quarters of that. We're almost done. What do you think, about half an hour? Yeah. It went much better going in than coming out, that's for sure. We've got a bucket here of sample rocks. A bit more there in the dirt. The pay dirt from down the bottom and it better pay because that was a lot of work. There we go. A couple of weeks from now all the greenery will be popping up. You won't be able to know we were here. By fall, everything will be overgrown. And all the dead ferns and stuff will be dropping down. The tree trees will drop what needles they do. And within a year you won't even know we were here. So all of our effort so far has led to three visits of slugging it out real hard. I'm packing up the chairs while I'm talking. Oh. Yep, lots of heavy lifting. So this is the, oh mom, I'm dropping the chair. This is the last trip to go out. There's beautiful mosses. This place is pristine almost, except for people were in here 30 years or so ago. Logged it all. But they left a lot of dead stuff. It's fed the system quite well. So we're going to go down to that pit and take a look at it. And I'll get back to you. Alrighty, this is another part of the claim. And Andy's going to look for hot rocks in here. Rocks containing metal. They, they will make it go beep, beep, beep. You can see the work that's been done here. They There's still water in the bottom over here. All this dead brush, they just kind of knocked in after they were done. But they dug this out to do a test, I was told, by the guy that did it, testing for gravels, right? Because he has a uh, aggregate business going. They do the logging roads. So that's what he said. He told me this was a good spot. Was that your boot? In the rock? Okay, check it again. Which one? Is it that, that yellow one, eh? Okay, let's take a look at this. It's claiming there's silver. Oh, oh my gosh, that ever heavy. Okay, that sucker. Wow, that's incredible. You could lift weights with that puppy. Okay, we're taking that back to the car. Oh, I'll take that back to the car. There's a nice piece of quartz here on with uh, pink on this rock, Andy, right beside me. Right down there where this rock's pointing. Just take a look, see if you can see anything on it. Anyway, the pit goes up this way. A good 100 and 150 feet. Look at that. Yeah. So this is what we're looking at. I mean, these are really heavy, dense rocks loaded with metals. And there was this particular rock in here that... Um, I'm going to just throw this guy up there for now. A particular rock I found that I thought was arsenic um, when I visited here before. Oh, that's pretty. That's a lot of silver. Look at the red in that. That's a lot of oh, pink. So you got another silver hit? Yeah, now the silver can go off with nickel, it can go off with. Whoa, yeah, that's the uh, hip of an animal or something along those lines. What's left of one? Somebody was hunting back here, and that'd be my guess. And that's legal. They're allowed. So they've got their permits and all that garbage. When it comes to hunting for food, I'm not one who agrees we should have to pay for what's already considered crown land, crowned ours, but yeah, politics. I understand the purpose and the premise, but I also understand sometimes 
You just need the food. Alright. Standing out right there. We've got all that iron in that one. And there's a bluish tinge to it in there. I bet you Andy will get a hit on that. It's not quite as heavy as I would have thought. Here, get a hit on that one. No way. Eh? Wow, you can see the iron in that one. Oh, look at this purple. Oh my, that ever purple. No, that is really a purpley color though. Huh. Gotta wonder what's in them. Okay, here we have a blue, very blue, with some beautiful pink going throughout it. It's not quite as heavy as I would have expected. Here we have an intrusion into this one. We got a bluey green color on both ends with an intrusion right through the middle and some sulfides right there. It's probably. Oh, oh there goes Mr. Spider. It's a warm day. The bugs are coming out. I don't know if you'd list spiders amongst them, but I do. Somewhere up here I found the one that had an arsenic. People say you can't smell metals, but it, it had an odor to it like it had been burned. And uh, it is apparently volcanic rock. I didn't know what it was when I actually smelt it. Got home, did some research, and went, ooh, don't be smelling that. <laughs> Arsenic is uh, bound in the rock, so it won't kill you until you start powdering it and stuff. <laughs> That's not a mistake you want to make. There's a nice one with uh, dark intrusions. And some green, greeny blue. Yep, chances are there's some metal in that. There's another green one right over here. He's hitting a lot, but it's one out of, you know, 50 to 100 stones. Ah, here we go. Look at this stuff. This is very different. Glasses on for this guy. Oh yeah, yeah. There's some iron. It appears to be right in there. It could be. It does look like iron to me, but it could be nickel or even silver, though not as likely. But this is the type, very similar to what I saw. Very um, rough. Yeah. I mean, you rub your fingers on that and you smell it. It smells like it's been, to, been a little burned. Uh, it's not quite the scent smell. Um, a metallic burnt smell, maybe? So whatever it is, it's coating this rock. The rock I saw, however, I don't see it around anymore. Um, it was made of all of that, the whole thing. This has other stuff and there's a white powdery film all through this, so probably a high amount. Here it looks almost quartzish. So, and I'd say that's probably. Andy, did you try this gap on the rock? That yeah. yeah. Did it go off? Yeah. No way, eh? because on the back it almost looks like it'd be full of silver. Right up in here it's all colorful. Not a hit. Weird. Just goes to show you, you can look with your eyes and see stuff, but then you turn around and check it, and there's nothing in it. Now this looks like almost like concrete on that, but that's been split right off. That side, nothing to look at. This side, pretty pink with an intrusion running through, and smaller ones.
iron moves definitely. You can see the iron in it. No signs of anything else to the naked eye anyway. But there's a piece of quartz running through something very pretty. No sign of gold or any other metal. There could be some in it, but it's not showing. And that's the way it goes. Most of the rocks here, you're not going to see anything visible. But the odd time, like here, we've got an intrusion going right through. Right? Here it is again, and it's got green stone in it. There's a bit, bit of green here, a bit here. You can see here where it's been corroded, and down on the side again, so that, and along here. So something like this, that's a quartz vein, going through with a bluey-green metal, which could be nickel. And over here, and along here, there's areas where something has leached out of it and is gone. Oh, mama, she had it. Yeah. Same thing there, it's been all corroded out. That's much brownish. Uh... Alright, you got a hit in this one here. And you got a hit on this one here. Yeah, you can see it's got something in it, but not anything standing out as Yahoo. So that's it. We're going to look around here, poke around, and that'll be the day we'll go home and pack. We've got a third of a bucket or so of pay dirt that we're going to run over the next while. The weather lets us. And I really wish I had some gold to show you. That would be um, really nice. I'd be excited, you'd be excited, but sadly you can't always win. The rock is just glimmering back from back there. got some kind of a metal in it. Lots of them do here. So I hope you enjoyed learning with us a little bit. Coming along for the watch if you did. Oh looky there. There's something right there. You see that? Shining right on the surface. Yeah. I wonder what that could be. Oh, get off me. Dog on spider went right up my leg. Alright, let's put on the glasses. What do you get out of this guy? Because I could see metal on him. Oh yeah. Nothing, eh? Look at that. So that's probably just pyrite. That's a serious greenish blue rock. Yeah. And look at the color of the pinks throughout it. And over on this side. Oh, look at that. There's another chunk there. But you can see the metal in it. You can see the sheen in the tip here. Uh, just goes to show you, like, that's heavy. There's metal in that. But it's not enough to set off the detector. We got a shiny right there on that rock. I can still see it, even though I'm shading it. And of course, if I get out of the sun, it should show up even better. Right on the surface, just sitting there. That one looks like it's got a lot of iron. Which one you got? He says he might have copper, he might have gold. He doesn't know. You can see it. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a pyrite of some sort. Right in there, right where that band is, you can see the shinies. 
It looks like copper to the eye. I'm guessing chalcopyrite. Uh, fool's gold. Well, we'll take that home as a sample though. Just all along here where the pinky color is. But it doesn't set off the metal detector. It's uh, going through here. Oh yeah, that looks like right the, out yeah. It side. looks like the same one. You're right. Same color. Yeah, you can see some shine in there. Little bits throughout. It may not be gold, but or silver. But I wonder if those are chipped off one that somebody grabbed a sample of. Yeah, it seems to be right in this rock, like they threw it at the rock. It's not gold, so they probably didn't take it. Yeah, most likely pyrite. That's interesting. But where there's pyrite, there might be a tiny speck of gold. Nothing showing, eh? Alrighty, bud. Let's go to ourselves home. Yeah. That's it.